Paula, so um, just thinking about um, the, the uh, mental, World Mental Health Week uh, uh, coming up, World Mental Health Day on the 10th of October, um, are there, is there anything particularly which um, you think that you'd like to say in terms of what the Alliance Party feels about particular priorities um, or what needs to be done? Well, I suppose this whole um, pandemic has really shone a light on um, mental health and the impact on those people who are maybe already struggling mm -hmm. um, with, with certain aspects of their lives. I suppose as MLAs, we receive quite a lot of correspondence from carers, for example, who were providing 24-hour um, care for their loved ones. And, yeah. and you know, they, they were happy to do that, but they just felt a, a lot of strain because obviously um, domiciliary care workers weren't coming in and they weren't maybe sending their loved ones to school or to day centre. So I suppose um, my concern um, now and going forward is that the people who are so busy mm -hmm. coping with life and coping yeah. with um, the pressures of, of family, uh, families, especially those who've got um, additional and special needs, that we make sure that this mental health strategy engages with them and finds a way to engage with them and that their needs are very much reflected. You know, service users, people who are already in the system have, have lived experience and, and have an opportunity, will have an opportunity to feed in. But I think that there's a lot of people who are voiceless and maybe don't know what they don't know in terms of what services are out there in terms of providing this. So I think that we have a great opportunity, mm -hmm. um, but I think that there's a lot of people who, who probably need the services and are not accessing them at the minute. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think certainly uh, seeing the appointment of the interim mental health champion, Siobhan O'Neill, um, I know she's just starting and it's early days yet, but I hope that uh, that will be something to um, enable people to have their voice heard and she'll bring it right to, to the top table as well. Uh, and in terms of the, the mental health champion, I don't know if you had a chance yet to meet Siobhan and get a sense as to what direction she's going in and what she'll be doing and what she'll be advocating for. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I attended one of the um, all-party groups. I think it was either suicide prevention or mental health, one of those, yes. and she, she spoke at it. And I suppose I got the sense she's still very much in listening mode, which is great. And um, obviously she's an incredibly intelligent, insightful woman. So I suppose right now I think she, I, I just get the impression that she's trying to meet as many people as possible. And I always use the phrase, you don't know what you don't know. So I think she's pretty much just yeah. trying to make sure she doesn't, she, she doesn't drop anything. I chair the all-party group on cancer and mm -hmm. obviously have concerns about delays in uh, people accessing cancer treatment and how that impacts mental health. But also I think that the process that they undertook with the sort of eight work streams mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. everything from prevention right through to palliative end of life. And I think that it's a really good model that I would like to see replicated in the development of this, con the, sorry, this mental health strategy, which allows then people with lived experience to feed in, but also then people in in all um, walks of society, whether it's community and voluntary sector like yourself, right through to the clinicians, the people who are at the at the cool face at the, at the hard end of this. So, um, you know, we do have a wonderful opportunity. I suppose a lot of people's concern is once we get on, is there going to be enough money then to deliver yeah. on and meet people's expectations? Yeah, yeah. Great. No, absolutely. I suppose uh, the World Mental Health um, strap line uh, this year is about greater investment, greater access. And I suppose investment would be certainly something which we as a sector would very much advocate for. That There's been talk of lots of policies and reviews in the past, but actually following through and making sure the investment is there to make sure it happens has been the key thing. That's really great. I mean, is, is there any final message you want to uh, send perhaps even to maybe the minister um, or the officials who are able to drive this strategy and, and what they should be considering as we go forward? Well, I suppose the final point I would make is I think that this new executive um, mental health and well-being group is is fantastic, and I really do hope that it it, it follows through and, and and has sustained life. Because I was speaking to somebody at the weekend there, and I think there's very few people in life who don't face a trauma at some stage or a crisis. So I think that while the health Department of Health have got a major role to play in this, education does as well, and communities, you know, in terms of building the resilience and you know just. A whether it's a bereavement in childhood or, or you know, yeah. a messy divorce or, you yeah. know, or, or addiction, that people are equipped with the tools and also then the, the um, education and knowledge of where they can get the support in a timely fashion. So it really is a, a cross-departmental issue as far as I'm concerned, but I'm really delighted that the Department of Health and Siobhan O'Neill are, are driving it forward. Great. 
Brilliant. Look, thanks so much, Paul. That's really helpful. And so that last point about integration across society, across the lifespan as well, you know, it affects mm-hmm. mental health, affects everyone everywhere. It's such a good, strong message. So thanks very much for that. No problem. No problem. Thanks very much.